Hi, I'm Renee. And I'm Anthony. And we are the channelers, healers, and voices behind Blue Soul Earth. We connect to higher levels of consciousness to bring forth divine energies to teach ancient wisdom and to heal. These energies that we access from higher dimensions largely consist of the ascended masters that humanity across cultures know really well. They are many, but they speak collectively as one voice. And for the sake of simplicity, we simply call them our spirit team. And how we channel as a couple is quite unique. Divine energies come through Renee's crown chakra, through her solar plexus, and into my solar plexus chakra, through my crown chakra, and back up. And it forms a three-dimensional triangle, which is used to teach and to heal. Now these energies flow back and forth, a bit like an infinity eight. And the symbolism behind why and how this happens is pretty profound. It's accessing divine feminine energies and divine masculine energies and weaving them together as one energy to teach and to heal. Now for our Blue Soul Wisdom series, we're actually going to be channeling different topics in roughly 10 to 15 minute segments. So if you're just starting out on your spiritual journey, or if you'd simply like to access higher levels of consciousness, or you would like to take your healing practice to the next level, then join us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anthony. And I'm Renee. And we're here today to talk about Mary Magdalene, or otherwise known as Miriam of Magdala. She's in the news a lot lately. People are taking sacred journeys to the south of France to connect or reconnect with Miriam of Magdala. So in addition to the guides that we channel, which make up a collective of Ascended Masters, we also channel Miriam of Magdala. We thought we would talk about the polarity of Mary Magdalene and how she was perceived 2,000 years ago versus all of the new texts that describe her today as the Divine Feminine and so far from how she was portrayed by the Catholic Church in the early biblical writings. So we just finished Mary Magdalene Revealed by Megan Watterson, an amazing book. We love it. We've probably read about 20 books on Mary Magdalene at this point, but I'm going to reference some of the texts in Megan's book for starters. So um, we're gonna bring forth our guide shortly, and maybe Miriam of Magdala will step through and yeah, we'll speak. See. We'll speak. Good. So as Anthony tries to connect to our guides and bring our guides through, I'm just gonna read a few things from Watterson's book. The polarity of Mother Mary the Virgin and Mary Magdalene the prostitute has always seemed a bit too familiar, too contrived to be true. In the sacred embrace of Jesus and Mary, explains by Lelou, we have forgotten to represent the other side of Christ, his feminine side, in a way beyond the reductionist stereotypes of mother and whore. He says, I'm ready for a Mary that is a third option, a middle between these extremes that touches to the truth more faithfully. A Mary who isn't a whore or a virgin, or perhaps it's a Mary that is both, like the voice in the thunder perfect mind. I am the whore and the holy woman. I am the wife and I am the virgin. Hello. It is an honor and privilege to be in your presence, Gaia. Hi guys, how are you? Good, thank you. So our guides are now here. Do you have a guest coming? We have a guest coming. Yes. Good. This energy wishes to step forward. <clears throat> we are happy to have her. So Miriam of Magdala's energy is about to step forward. So how we channel for those of you who are new to us, our guides are a collective group that speak as one voice. And if one energy among those ascended masters of which Mary Magdalene is one of them and one of our guides who comes through on a regular basis, that energy, the soul that was once Miriam of Magdala will step through to speak, and that's what's happening now. It's 
good to see you. It's always good to see you. I see that he's growing his hair, and I'm glad <laughs> about that. <laughs> he is indeed. <laughs> I am very happy that you are making me front and center, <laughs> where I truly belong. <laughs> you do look beautiful today. And might I say, you look a lot like me when I was upon the earth. It's nice to see you. It's always you. nice to see you and feel your energy and to learn your wisdom. So to be honest, I've loved almost every book that I've written about you. And I know that none of them are the full truth. They're all a variance or an aspect of an interpretation of you. Can you tell us from what Watterson writes and many other authors write about this middle ground that is really trying to tell the truth from the Gnostic Gospels that came out in 1945 and beyond? Yes. Who, who was the Miriam of Magdala really? Well, the Mary of Magdala is dependent upon who you are and what your perspective is and in which realm you're living. But let's keep it simple. The energy that I once was when I came through and I incorporated the body that was referred to as Mary of Magdala. Know this. I am a very strong energy and I do like being portrayed as that as well. I was the lover of Yeshua and the energies or the information that you have within your books are correct. Not all of it is correct, but a lot of it holds a perception that is true. Your Catholic Church decided not to make me of the essence that I truly was but something that I truly was not. I was not a prostitute. I was not a lady of the night. Far be it from that. I was a very, very high light energy, that of Isis energy. Initiate, one of the adepts, one of the very high followers of this energy. And this was the energy that I gave on to Yeshua to help him through his process as well. How did the energy that you gave him and the teaching and the interactions that you had as a sacred couple at the time assist him on his journey? Path, on his journey. On his path or on his journey. I will tell you this. Yeshua and I were lovers. We exchanged our ka our life forces and in that way we practice our meditations as well we heal together you call it reiki we simply healed with our hands yeshua became very connected to christos energy and god source energy through his travels to the ancient indias he learned a great deal of wisdom customs and you might call it magic but it is not magic it was an ability to heal in a different way he took on all of the energies that you and anthony take on as well which made him very strong very very strong in his ability to heal and to teach when yeshua met me he became even stronger he became divine masculine i was divine feminine and that way we weaved our energies together to form one energy that connected directly to source energy or god the father that we would call it now in that way we became the true healers and teachers that we set out to be as you and anthony have set out to be in this lifetime in a way, for those looking back who are not religious or connected to these biblical teachings, it appears that you were very strong shamans, if you like, of your time. 
shamans you can call us, <laughs> sages, mages, and the other things that your Catholic Church would call great shaman witches. Shamans or witches they called them because the women were the great healers, the great teachers, the great vessels of knowledge. But the Catholic Church did not want to hear anything of that. And there were many women who followed Jeshua and your work, correct? There were many women who are not necessarily noted anywhere. No, they are not, but they were all initiates of mine as well. I and the mother of Mary, the mother of Yeshua, Mary, she and I chose these energies, these women, to be part of our group, to be part of who we are as well. This initiate experience that you went through, can you speak to that for people who are not familiar with it? These are experiences that you still hold sacred to these days. You sometimes refer to them as cults. But they are nothing more than the study of the ancient wisdoms. Your Kabbalah, you call it. Your paganism, you call it. Your magic, you call it. Alchemy, you call it. These are all the things that I studied along with Mary, the mother of Yeshua as well. We were very well versed in your how do you say, your alchemy, the things that help to heal others. Was this in Egypt? Of course, yes. But it was in other lands as well, as in the Indies. These were things, these were studies that were kept clandestine, silenced. We could not talk about these things at all, but we could support each other as women. For the men did not support us. They did not recognize us even as being human. However, Jeshua did. Now, therein lies the problem. For that Jeshua broke all the rules. All of the rules that said that women were equal to men. And that we all, as women too, possessed God, the Father, within us. And that it was truly the woman and the man coming together through a sexual act that combined the Ka that connected with God's source energy. The Kundalini awakening through sex. Yes. In a way, to simplify what you're referring to. And in this way, it strengthened the Ka body around both of you. That is correct. And, wh and why was this important? Think about your DNA resonating together as one source energy. Think about how you are communicating with each other this way, how your DNA starts to resonate, the frequencies start to shoot out, start to vibrate even faster. When you truly connect as one living being together, but you must be cognizant and you must have the intention to do that. If not, it is not sacred. Keep your making of love holy and sacred. And that is what we did together. For he kissed me upon the mouth <laughs> many times. Do you know what Spirare in Latin, it is breath. You could say that this is the breath of God. And when you kiss and you breathe into each other, you are exchanging the breath of God. Was this ever done in front of the disciples? Yes. And they certainly did not like it. But you know something that is okay with me. I made them well aware that I was his lover, and that I was, as you say, the top dog, <laughs> the alpha female. 
and they didn't like it. But that is okay. I understand. At the time, it was very difficult for them. We knew that the truth would not come out for many, 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 many years later. And it has come out now. You cannot keep the truth down. For the resonance and frequency is too high. It will come out eventually. What is a mere 2,000 years? <laughs> but nothing. Remember that I am the soul of Mary of Magdala. I am not the body. Remember these things when I speak to you. And when I come through to you, you may look at me as the body of Mary of Magdala if you choose, and that will be good. But I am the soul, and I will come through you if you choose. <laughs> Your spirit team. We'll step forward now. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for your wisdom, your insight, and addressing some of the things in her book. Well, isn't she quite the soul? You know, she was truly, how do we say, more of the masculine energy than Yeshua was. He was very feminine in a way, very gentle. You mean the human Yeshua? Yes, that is true. Her soul is a very strong, highlight being. And she presented herself that way as the female, as the woman. Thank you. Thank you. We will take leave now. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you for having us and thank you for receiving us. So as our guides are leaving now, Anthony will be back. If you're interested in learning more or if you want us to channel more of Mary Magdala, we're happy to do so in even longer segments. Uh, we can even do it in a Q&A format. So if that is of interest to you, let us know. For those of you who are interested in reading more about the Ka that she spoke about, you can tune in to Tom Kenyon's book, The Magdalene Transcripts. Let us know your thoughts and we hope to hear from you. And Anthony's back. Yes, um, I'd like to thank you for joining us and we look forward to working and channeling more for you. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you.